Hey, it's James from Active, and today's video is specifically about the performance numbers on the 2.0. We thought it'd be helpful for everyone to really go deep on what the manufacturer claimed performance specs are and what you can expect when you get your 2.0 or really any pressure washer when you get home and take you through exactly how we test it, what the regulations governing actual certifications are, and explain some of the differences in terms of inputs that yield these different performance numbers. Again, as I mentioned in many of the tests, what's really important here to understand is that given your specific inputs in terms of energy and water, and given your specific, uh, let's say, accessories or hose lengths or cords and, and nozzles, um, what's important is we feel and we know our units will perform better than any other unit on that given system. And that's really the important part here. So let's take you through the different factors that impact testing and performance figures. So what impacts the performance of these units? Well, I'll say the first thing is the input. So there are three big things that will impact the performance of the unit. The first thing will be the voltage available from the particular socket that you're using. So some homes have very old circuits, some homes are newer, some homes are running on slightly more power and some less. So that's going to be a big factor in how much power the pressure washer has available to draw from. The other thing is in the US you need to have a 35 foot cord and for example in Canada it's only 23 foot cord and that's also going to give the Canadian version slightly more power. Um, the second thing of course is the water pressure coming into the pressure washer itself. So both from a flow and pressure perspective, people's water supply also range vastly differently depending on your home, where you're located, etc. And so that can affect the performance of the pressure washer as well. Typical household water, call it garden hose or faucets, will range anywhere between 40 and 60, even 80 PSI. Anything above 100 PSI will typically begin to hurt and almost even damage the performance and even the pump of the pressure washer itself. Um, the flow can be anywhere between 6 GPM and 12 GPM. Again, that can depend on your own particular uh, water outlet as well as even time of day depending on where you're getting your water supply from. So again, a big variance in terms of the water supply will impact the performance of your pressure washer. The last thing is how the pressure washer itself is set up. So are you using extended hose? What nozzles are you using? Are you using the stock gun? Those things are all gonna impact, again, the performance that you're gonna get from the unit itself. So how are these units rated as per regulatory standards? Well, there are different associations out there that rate these pressure washers, but really, the CSA UL standard really governs safety as opposed to performance. And when you do go through the standard, which is about 200 pages long, you'll see that most of the requirements are really based around product safety and um, regulating standards as it relates to that, as opposed to how those inputs then would translate to the actual performance of the unit. So some of the factors that they kind of consider are things like current leakage, um, does the temperature of the motor rise a significant amount to cause an overheating issue? Hydrostatic tests and stability and impact tests if the unit gets knocked around during shipping and so forth. So that's really what the regulatory bodies are concerned with as it relates to pressure washers. Less about the actual performance. So there's not even a uh, you know, hard and fast rule on the inputs when testing these units and therefore rating these units. Um, that being said, um, the way that we certify and test them, you can typically say that the G inlet pressure is at about 6 GPM and the pressure from the factory is about 40 to 50 PSI coming into the unit. Um, for voltage, again, uh, even though they're all rated at 120 volts, 60 hertz, um, CSA does allow for a 10% plus minus difference in the operating voltage. So you could be running the machine anywhere between 104 to 133 volts, as long as the temperature of the motor does not increase more than 90 degrees Fahrenheit from ambient, which is again, to protect the user from overloading and overheating the, the motor. But all this really kind of shows 
in addition to kind of um, the variances that you'll see, is that there is a wide operating range that these units are tested for, um, and that wide operating range then determines kind of the different numbers that everyone will see when they're using their products as per their individual inputs. So, based on all that, how are we as the manufacturer rating this product? Well, the way we look at it is we want to rate it in a fair fashion and uh, promise to consumers they're going to get a degree of performance across, call it most people's average inputs. So we chose the 3.7 nozzle, which is what it's going to ship with, as the best balance of pressure and flow given kind of average numbers in terms of electricity and water. So the numbers that we get will be around 1,000 PSI operating pressure, around 2.0 plus GPM, and your current draw should not exceed, uh, you know, about 14 amps under any condition. And we think those are conservative good numbers uh, for most people. And again, those numbers are going to be relatively better than we think most other pressure washers on the market. Um, of course, as the 2.0 starts to go out in the market, you're going to see variances across different testing protocols and the way people, you know, use the product. And that's not to mean that uh, any of these testers are not giving the right numbers. It's more just that their individual setup is going to yield different results. And again, what's important is that how do those results stack up to units that they've tested on the exact same circuit? And that's really what you really want to know. Now, the great news is the 2.0 on our standardized tests are showing performance figures that are better than our current V52 by 10 plus percent. So it's a substantial improvement to what we've made and the V52 was, a, was already substantially better than most units on the market and that's why we're so excited about the product. So I hope you guys found that helpful in terms of understanding how we are rating our units and why people are getting different ratings you know, when they do different tests because there's a lot of inputs that, that matter to the performance of the unit and how you're doing the test is gonna give you those different numbers. So um, we just thought this would be helpful for people to understand, understand how inputs matter, understand how we rate the machine and what our kind of objective is in terms of our ratings um, and really help you make a better choice when buying the product.